36.
in my life for so long you were right when I was wrong I can't repay all the love you've given me you've been my friend when no one cared I was alone but you were there Lord you're the best thing that's ever happened
rose of Sharon, bright morning star, the king of all ages, he's greater by far, physician and healer. several hours throughout the day today putting notes in my phone and uh, we're about to switch it up <laughs> if I make a flop of this I'll take the blame be all right but if I try to preach what I was going to preach and I make a flop of that I know that's my fault so turn with me in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter number one might not be before you five minutes, but I'm going to try to follow what God just put on my heart. Right there while Diane was singing that song. I'd looked at this earlier a week or so back and just read this and went on and was wanting to go over here to Titus, but we're going to go here for a minute. So please, when I say pray for me, pray for me. I don't, I don't say that just to be saying it. Also, uh, uh, we're just going to pray for I preach. Uh, I want you to pray for me and then... Madison and Tanner are going up to Spruce Pine tonight. Uh, Number one, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings 
in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us into the adoption of the children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. You can be seated. I want to preach from right here just tonight for a few minutes. I don't even know uh, which way I'm going to go, but I just want to follow God uh, for a minute. But it says here in verse number three, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I thank God for a heavenly Father, amen, uh, that's got spiritual blessings uh, for His children. You know, I am a child of God tonight, and I thank God for all the blessings uh, that He's bestowed in my life. We get so uh, wrapped up, and uh, not wrapped up, and we need to do this, but we'll stand up, every one of us that testify, we'll say, man, I thank God for the home uh, that He's given me. I thank God uh, for the health that He's given me. I thank God that He lets me get out of bed in the morning. I thank God for the clothes that He puts on my back. I thank God for the ability uh, that He gives me to go work, Brother Ricky, and provide for my family. I thank God for the work that He provides for us, Doug, uh, so that we can make a living. And we'll get so wrapped up in that. But you know what? I want to stop tonight as I was reading that while the choir was singing. I thank God for the heavenly and spiritual blessings uh, that He gives to His children. Children, amen. Uh, sometimes or not sometimes, uh, most always those are way more important uh, than the natural blessings. It don't matter. Amen. You can uh, you can live in a little old single wide trailer that's run down or you can live in a mansion on the hill. Uh, but if you ain't got the spiritual blessings uh, that come down from heaven, uh, you'll be a miserable somebody in your big old house. Uh, my little granny Ogle, she never had a big old fancy house. Uh, just always had... Uh, a little old meager home, but you know what? I'd see her in there when I was a boy. I'd stay, and she'd be in her back bedroom, and she'd be in there studying, or we'd be out in the yard, and I'd hear her in there praying, and man, even as a kid, Lori, I'd hear it start to get rich in there. Then I'd hear Granny in the house uh, shouting, and you know what, Aunt Catherine? Uh, I'd never even thought about this as a kid. Uh, Dad, there'd be stuff on the stove of cooking. Hey, Amen. I tell you what, you can leave some Something on the stove of cooking, and Jane, it ain't a minute. It's gonna be burned or scorched. But I've been right there in that house, and Granny have something going, and go to shouting and praising God all over the house. And you should have went back and seen the food burn and the stuff scorched and the spilling on the stove. Uh, but you know what? Uh, she's getting hold of a yonder country, and we got a God that's big enough, hey Amen, uh, to put that stuff on simmer uh, while Grandma uh, was uh, getting a hold of some spiritual blessings uh, that only come from up on high. Hey, we need to tap into some of that. Uh, God's got blessings for you and he's got blessings for me. Uh, we don't have to stay in the moly grubs. Uh, we don't have to stay beat down. Uh, we get to looking at the very uh, situation that we're in and Granny could have looked across the road uh, that the house that was three times uh, the size of hers. Uh, she could have looked across the road and seen that man that had fancier vehicles uh, than that little old car she had uh, but I never one time ever heard her say I wish I had a bigger home or I wish I had a bigger car uh, she'd bow her head and say God I thank you for what you give me uh, but more than that I thank you for what you've got laid up somewhere in a yonder country uh, for those that love you and that are looking for your appearing we need to be way more zoned in on our spiritual blessing than Paul is talking to the church. You know, he said the faithful, amen. He said the faithful, uh, God's got spiritual blessings for you. That's why I get up here and preach, uh, be faithful to the house of God. Uh, be faithful to his word. Uh, be faithful to your prayer place uh, because it ain't just the material things uh, that he'll bless you with. Hey, I went out today. I had a day that should have made me uh, madder than a hornet. I spent all the money 
money that I had just about uh, buying material from a man and he told me he knowed exactly what I needed. He said, it's exactly what you're going to, he said, I don't even need you to give me the measurements. He sent me the material. I paid nearly $5,000 for it. Uh, Dad calls me and says, all this material's wrong. Oh man, the first thing Elijah is my blood pressure went out the roof. I called that guy. He's trying to say it's my fault. I'm trying to say it's his fault. I said, brother, I'll just get back to you. And boy, all of a sudden, all of a sudden from out of nowhere, I felt the Holy Spirit just come by and get in that old truck with me. And I didn't even call him back. I wasn't worried about it. God began to sup with me and I began to sup with him. And I wasn't worried about that metal chain. I wasn't worried about that job. I was just worried about the spiritual blessings uh, that I was getting to have with my father uh, right then. Hey, it might have looked like my day was going to start out kind of bad. But oh, when Jesus comes by and he begins to sup with you and sit with you and you know that everything's all right uh, between you and him. Amen. You can experience uh, them spiritual blessings uh, that only come from the father of lights. Amen. Bless his holy name. If you ain't never experienced that, you can today. Be faithful to him. Uh, put your, I told Avery today, I was talking, I said, you know what most of our problems are? I said, we won't decrease uh, so he can increase. It's all about what we want. It's all about our little old feelings. It's all about our little old problems. And we put that before God. Hey, I let God, hey, do what you want. Uh, say what you want. I want to decrease uh, so that God can increase in my life. I want him to increase in me uh, to a point uh, that I don't even care about nothing on this earth. All I want to care about is those spiritual blessings uh, that my father's got laid up for me. Are you picking up what I'm laying down? Hey, man, it's the best thing that ever happened. I mean, it's one of the worst days I've had at work in a long time. But you see what? I got my mind on Calvary. I got my mind on Jesus. And he took all them cares away. That stuff ain't going to matter in a month. It ain't going to matter in a year. But oh, when we get linked up with God and we get to pouring out out on us and we get them spiritual blessings, they ain't no end to them things. Amen. Uh, God just builds on them and he builds on them and he builds on them. He said he'd pour out more on us. Uh, than we could even stand, amen. Hey, he's got good things uh, laid up for those that love him and worship him, amen. I want to give him some praise and worship tonight because I crave them spiritual blessings. I crave them times uh, when he gets on me, Dwayne Ray, and I don't care about nothing in this world. God, I want them spiritual blinders on me so I can't see nothing on the left or nothing on the right. I don't want to turn right and I don't want to turn left. I want to keep pressing toward the prize and the mark of the high calling of where my help comes from. Where does it come from? It comes from the hills and it comes from Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed be his name tonight and thank you for the spiritual gifts that he pours out on me. Bless his name tonight. He said blessing in heaven. He said according he hath chosen us. That's good. Amen. I didn't choose you. President didn't choose you. God chose you. God, Jesus, the one that spoke this thing to exist, he chose you. Man, I remember being in school, Jamie. On the athletic realm, I wasn't on the bottom, but I wasn't on the top. I was mediocre. I was in the middle somewhere. You'd go out there to play baseball or tag football. I get up here sometimes and I tell you how mean I was when I was little. But I always down deep had a tender heart. Avery, I know that I was going to get chose somewhere in the middle. When they chose the basketball team, I was about this tall. I know they weren't going to choose me first. I know that old Darren Moore is going to get chose first, Jamie. I mean, he's seven foot tall in the sixth grade. <laughs> Dunking on it, and I couldn't even jump up and touch the net. So you're sitting right there, and everybody's lined up. I don't think teachers ought to allow this to school, really. It, it's terrible. And as mean as I was, I'd get chosen in the middle, so that wasn't too bad. But there's always them little kids that always got chose last. And there's some of them that say, well, this one's going to be on. We don't want him. Well, he's on your team, whether you want him or not. Well, we don't want him. Well, he's going to be on your team. I always felt sorry for them kids. I did. Mean as I was, I felt sorry for him, Memo and Jake. But you know what? They somebody way more important than somebody picking a football team or a little old basketball team. 
And Avery, if God was looking down, had a crowd in here, and he's like, let me pick out the holiest, bestest, this and that. And if we could imagine God standing up here tonight, he's like, all right, I'm going to pick my team. Hey, some folks be like, he's going to pick me first. I'm bound to go first. I do this, I do that, I say this, I act like this, I do this and that. They're just sitting right there, just God pick me, you know I'm first. And you got them other little old Christians that's sitting there and saying, God probably won't even pick me at all. He'll probably pick all these and I'll be last and he'll probably be like, well, I got to take you, but I don't really want you, but I'll go ahead and take you. That ain't how my God works. Them ones are sitting there thinking, I'll be in the first draft pick. Bible said that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Amen. Amen. So we get to thinking too high and mighty of ourselves. God's going to put us on the back burner. And them little old lowly ones that get off and talk to him and they're not in the limelight, God's going to say, hey, I'm going to pick you. Hey, you come right up. Ain't you glad? When, boy, when he looked at me, Jason, he wasn't getting much. He wasn't getting much. And I, I remember them little old kids as they'd stand there when there was a picking. Jane, they'd just stand there with their head down. They know this going to be last. They wouldn't even hold their head up. Brother Laddie, that's how I feel when, when I come to Christ. I wasn't even able to hold my head up. But you know what? He done like he talked to Joshua. He said, hey, get up from there. Hey, you get up from there and you look at me. I want you looking at me when I talk to you, son. He said, I choose you. Hey, he chooses you, church. He chooses you. God ain't got no second-rate Christians. He ain't got no second string. He's got first string only. I heard a story a while back about a woman that got on an airplane. And she was all rinsed up. She got on there, and she got in the first class, you know. Uh, she's back there getting weighted on hand and foot. And all of a sudden, this little old lady, uh, she gets on the plane, and she don't look like much. I uh, don't look like she's hardly got nothing. I uh, don't look like she belongs. And that woman began to question uh, those stories. She said, ma'am, I don't think that woman belongs in first class. I believe she snuck back here. Uh, you better check her ticket. Well, the stewardess just kind of blowed her off. Well, the woman's kind of getting irate about I mean, my God, she had her seat. Uh, why would it even matter, Jason? Uh, she had, but you know, that's how people are. Uh, they want the best, but they don't want you to have the best. Uh, they don't want you to have nothing. Uh, that way they can look down upon you, and they want the best. It wouldn't have mattered to me if I'd paid first class and every seat back here was empty. I'd say, why don't you go up there in the coach and bring some of them folks back here to sit with me? But that wasn't that woman's attitude, and I'm afraid a lot of times that ain't the attitude of the church. Uh, we want everything. Uh, we want the glory uh, but we want to look down upon other people and she said hey I don't believe that woman uh, belongs on here and she just kept on and on and on and finally that steward said ma'am uh, you don't know who you're talking about that woman's got enough money if she wants to she could probably buy this whole uh, planning outfit it ain't always what's on the outside hey she wasn't out there trying to float uh, what she had uh, she wasn't trying to make herself look like uh, what she wasn't and this other woman that was probably trying to look that way uh, probably deep down uh, she didn't have a tenth of what that woman had uh, what I'm saying is amen uh, God ain't got no folks riding in coach uh, if you're a child of God uh, we're all first class I don't hear no two or three raptures uh, where God's coming back to get this crowd then he's going to come back and get this crowd and then he's coming back to get that crowd uh, my Bible said uh, when the trumpet sounds uh, that he's coming to get those amen uh, that are looking and love his appearing and they ain't but one cloud going out of here. And that crowd that thinks they're better than everybody, they might be on the back of the cloud, amen. For they ain't got the view the rest of us peasants have. Amen. amen. Thank God. And hey, let, let me just stop and tell you something. If somebody's told you because your marriage failed and you've been married again at your second rate, they've lied to you. And I'm sorry they hurt your feelings. That's just somebody trying to look their nose down at you so they can think they're better than you and that's the only way they can do it. Don't let them people hurt you like that. Amen, preacher. That's right. There ain't no second class on this plane. There's some denominations 
I ain't going to get real plain right here, but if you ain't got this gift or you don't practice this gift or you don't practice that gift or this gift, uh, you're looked down on. Your, I know a man that went to my mama, my mama's church and he, wouldn't, he couldn't speak in tongues like they was uh, doing in that church and it drove that man so crazy uh, that he took his own life. Do you think that's of God? Don't you let nobody tell you if you ain't got this gift or that gift that thank God if somebody's told you you're a lesser Christian uh, because of that, I apologize uh, to you for that. Don't, don't you listen to that crowd. Uh, God don't have any second rate Christians. Uh, we are blood bought uh, by the Lamb of God. It took the same blood for every one of us and he loves his children all the same. If you're a parent uh, that treats one child uh, better than another child, uh, shame on you because God don't do that. Amen. We're chosen. He chose you uh, for who you are. Don't let nobody uh, look their nose down at you and act like they're better than you uh, because this or that and the other. Amen. That's a stink in the nostrils of God. As Everly says, that's disgusting. Well, you got this self-righteous crowd that think they're perfect. I know over in Revelations like 21 and 27, it says there'll be no abomination or, no, or none of those unbelievers that'll get in. But them folks will say, Bible says there ain't no sin going to enter in. Matter of fact, they don't even say it word for word like that, but that's, how they, that's what they say. My Bible says me that if we say we have no sin, that we're liars and the truth's not in us. For we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Oh. Well, preacher, there ain't going to be no sin in or in. They're right, but they're wrong. They're right on this account because when I hear that trumpet sound, what's going to happen? We're going what? We're going what? We're going to change. In the moment and in a twinkling of an eye and we're going to lay down this carnal body and put on a body of incarnality. We're going to lay down this mortal man and we're going to have a body uh, that's like Christ. Uh, so they're exactly right. They won't be no sin in or into that place because I'm going to have a body uh, that's like into my Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, this old carnal flesh ain't a going in that place. It ain't allowed. It ain't because I messed up and fouled up. It's because he made me a brand new creature preacher, amen, through Christ Jesus, amen. So they're wrong, but they're right. They're right about there ain't no sin going to enter in, uh, but they're wrong uh, because they think it's by their good works and they think it's caused their righteousness. The Bible said our righteousness is but filthy rag. Uh, the only righteousness we have is by the righteousness of Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed on Calvary uh, for our rotten dying. So thank God I am righteous through Jesus Christ, our heavenly father and him alone. So therefore, I'm not second class no more. Amen. I'm a child of the king. And you are too. Ain't you glad of that tonight? Hey, it's not of works lest any man should boast. It's a free gift of God. It's a, I'm glad it was free, Chris. So see, I've had... A lot of things in my life. I've bought this and I've bought that. And usually when I go buy something, I never really could afford the top of the line, Dwayne. Oh, I'd want it. I'd want the platinum truck. I'd want the heated seats and the big screen. And the, but really couldn't afford it. I'd end up getting the base model. Them days is going to be over for me for long. Lord, it ain't going to be choosing this little vanity or that vanity. Lord, I believe I'll have this gold one right here. The 36 carat, well, he's the only make it in 24. Well, Lord, I'd like to have mine. Well, I'll just give him the 36 carat. There'll be no more second class, amen. It'll all be glory over there. You think you're being silly, preacher? Oh, no, it's going to be nice. Oh, it's going to be nice. We'll have carpet that thick to walk on if you want it. Sir, would you like, I can't afford that. No, it's all on him. <laughs> There'll be no, I can't afford it no more. It's all on, it's been paid for. Your tithe's been paid for. Let me take you to your mansion over here. Mm. But you know what? There ain't going to be no jealousy over there. Because 
Ricky, I ain't going to be in no big old mansion. And you and the little one. They're going to all be exactly what we want. Then ain't that going to be a good place to be? I was thinking, I'll, I'm going to close right here. I was thinking about what Nicole said about that little old house. Want me to look at. That it's just a fixer up. I ain't got that off my mind all week. You know the good thing about that, Nicole? You got a list. When you seen that list, just probably like, oh no, I got a list. Be glad you got a list. You know what that list tells you? Exactly what you need to fix. <laughs> and if you'll go down that list and get them fixed and check them off, then they're off the list. You know who I feel sorry for? The folks that's got everything out here. But boy, all in here is a mess. And they ain't got a list. Boy, if you ain't got a list, you're in a mess. Sometimes I get a little cold on God and my fire ain't what I ought to be. It's like, God, I need a list. Lord, I need a list. What are you talking about? Every time I go do a job somewhere at the end, me and the homeowner will walk through and if there's a few things they don't like, they'll make what they call a punch list. I don't like this. I want to change it. Sometimes it might be my fault. Sometimes they just didn't like what they bought. But we'll go through and we'll get that list done. And I'll say, are you satisfied with this? I am. I'd like, well, would you sign this and say you're satisfied with this list so I can get paid? They'll say, we'll be glad to. Your list is took care of. I thank God for a list. That shows me the error of my ways. And shows me the things I need to fix up in my life. So when I stand before God and I'm calling out for them holy blessings from on high, I can say, God, I got my list and I've checked it, Lord. And Lord, I know I ain't perfect. Now, I've probably missed a few things, but I've checked the list off, God. He'll say, well, I got a little old thing or two for you right here. I got a few blessings. Thank God for a list. I'm glad that we've got a God that loves us, who chose us. He blessed us. He's chosen us. And we're going to be able to stand before him without blame. Why? Why? Who's him? Who is that guy? I love that guy, don't you? I love that guy. Having predestined, you know, some people, let me stop right here. I told you I was going, I'm a lying preacher. Having predestinated us unto the adoption. A lot of people say, well, there's so many people predestined, that's all one's going to get saved. That ain't what that means. Oh, my Lord, that ain't what that means. It means before the foundation of the world, he predestined a plan that he will adopt you if you want to be adopted. It ain't if he'll have you. It's if you'll have him. Ain't you glad he predestinated that plan? Wherein he hath made us by that plan and by that adoption accepted by the beloved. Amen. Don't let nobody look down on you. And don't look down on yourself. Jesus, when you got saved... He forgot your past. Forget it. Forget it. That hole in Nebo's gone, son. It's gone. They've done filled that in and built something over it now. You can't find that hole if you wanted to. Well, don't go looking for it. It's gone. You know why? Because the beloved. Because he loved you. He chose you. He died for you. He's got blessings for you. And one day you're going to stand before God the Father in righteousness because of him. Amen. And we're going first class. You can sit beside me if you want to, son. Be glad to have you. You glad you're saved tonight? Amen. Are you glad we all going first class, Dwayne Ray? Amen. Amen. One of these days. All right, let's stand and be dismissed. I will build, brother, for sure. Tonight, we've talked about God choosing us, God blessing us, God loving us, no second class, God forgiving us of our sins. Let's remember some of those 
that was gathered around right here in recent times, but for some reason they've got discouraged and they've got downtrodden. I got to talk to several today. They know right where they're at and they know right where God's at. And we need to pray that God would give them the encouragement to get back into his house where they can have exactly what they used to. Amen. And I talked to him a little bit about the Lord, and I told him that I was going to be praying for him, that the Lord would heal him, and he just, and he just been on my heart all mm -hmm. these years. And Lord, may God sure would, would deal with that man, go to him, I'll probably never see him again, but God knows That's where right. You don't have to. God knows where he's at. God knows right. where he is. Oh, David. Lord. Thank you, 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 situation. Anybody else before we pray? Anybody? Mike Johnson, would you lead us as we pray, brother? Heavenly Father, Lord, we bow before you tonight, God. I thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you for loving me, God. I thank you for choosing me, God. I thank you, Lord, for making me to be able to stand God and declare the truth of the word the way I love it, God, more than anything. Lord, it's just something I you, God, that I can't contain. Lord, I didn't always have that love and that desire, God, but Lord, I sure do thank you uh, for placing it in my heart. Lord, I thank you for the work that John talks about today, just alive and change me and heart, God. Lord, I just ask you to go to those, Lord, that it's not cold and indifferent, God, and go away from you, Lord. And God, that you would go to them, God, and call them back into your house, Lord, uh, before it's too late, God. So, Lord, I ask that you'd go to them, Lord, in love and compassion, Lord, and show them that you love them and that you want them back. And, God, they've not gone too far, Lord, that they can't come back to the Father's house. Lord, I ask you to be with this man that the Lord is talking about, God. Lord, he's wrecked his life. God, they've been many of us uh, wreck our life. God, but, Lord, like I said earlier, we're all just a bunch of kids for us, God. Go to him tonight, Lord, and, Lord, let the word that she said. A ring in his ears, God, that there is hope for him, God, and there's hope for his situation. But, Lord, it's only through your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I'll be asking to be with us again, Lord, and whatever these other ones have stood in for tonight, God, that you would meet these needs, Lord, as only you can, God. I thank you, Lord, that, that you do hear our cries, God, and you love us, and we know how to give good gifts. And, Lord, we don't come to you bowing down boldly, God, because that we're good, and we, we deserve anything, God, but we're coming to you, Lord, because you're you're good. And Lord, we know that you love us, God, even when we're bad. And Jesus, I thank you for that. Lord, help our church, God, to grow and prosper for your glory and honor, God. Now let us be a lighthouse in this community, Lord. Let us be a hospital for our souls, Lord, in the ways and way. Uh, Lord, that we would never push anybody down or drive them away. But Lord, that we'd all be bringing close to you with a love and in compassion and a spirit about us, God, uh, that seeks Jesus Christ and his love all over us, Lord. Uh, forgive me when I fail you, God. Forgive me for my God, and touch my life, God. And Lord, let me always be a life for you, Jesus. My burden, Lord, I love you, thank Jesus, you. and thank Lord, you for all that you do for being so good for me, Lord. Me are the same arms, Lord, that were wrapping around, Lord, Lord, Lord for David and Sister Karen. Lord, and their son tonight, Jesus. Help them, Lord, I pray. God, in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you, folks. We'll see you Sunday morning. Invite somebody.